I'll walk you through how batch processing works in Affinity Photo. It allows you to batch convert multiple images or documents simultaneously and can be accessed by going to File, New Batch Job. On the dialog, we have various options to the right here, but first we need to add some files that we wish to process. I'll click Add down here, then I'm going to browse to my wildlife imagery folder. In this folder, I have several Affinity Photo document files. These are image edits that I've worked on, and rather than export them individually, I can add them all to a batch job at the end of the editing session. For batch processing, you can add any valid or supported file type, such as JPEG, TIFF, PNG, PSD, or even various vector formats. I'll shift click and select them all, then choose Open or use Return on the keyboard, and this will add them to the file list. The next step is to determine where the converted files are saved to. If you wish to save them into the same folder as the source files, you may have to click Authorize here, due to a process called sandboxing, which is used to prevent applications from performing malicious behaviors. However, in most scenarios, it is better to save the files into a new location, which we can do by selecting Save Into, then clicking on this icon to browse to a specific folder. I'll create a new folder in Documents called Wildlife Exported, then click OK. Now we can move on to configuring the export options. You can convert to multiple formats simultaneously. So I could, for example, save out to both JPEG and TIFF, giving me a smaller shareable JPEG file as well as a TIFF file for archival and storage purposes. You'll notice AF Photo is enabled by default. This is Affinity Photo's native file format, and we'll come back to where this may be useful soon. I just want to convert to JPEG for now, so I'll uncheck both AF Photo and TIFF. The W and H input boxes allow us to resample the converted files. You can specify absolute width and height if you wish, or you can type a value into one box and leave the other blank, which will perform proportional scaling. For example, I might type 4000 into the width box, and the height for each image will be calculated automatically based on the aspect ratio. This proportional scaling can be explicitly disabled by unchecking the A option here. The buttons to the right will expose more options specific to each format. JPEG, for example, lets us configure options such as the resampling method, which I may change to Lantsos, non separable, for sharper resampling, as well as the ICC profile. This is especially useful if you are working with a wider color profile, such as ROM RGB or Adobe RGB and wish to explicitly convert to sRGB for sharing with other users in order to avoid color management issues. The quality value can be changed as well, with lesser values producing smaller file sizes at the expense of visual quality and fidelity. I'll bring the value up to 90 for my set of images, and I'll also enable progressive encoding which helps make the resulting JPEGs more suitable for web delivery, allowing them to be previewed gradually whilst they are downloaded. With all my appropriate changes made, I can click anywhere on the main dialog to close the additional options. Before clicking OK, I'll quickly explain parallel processing, which is enabled by default. This allows multiple input files to be processed and converted asynchronously. If you do experience any issues, this option can be disabled and files will be processed in a synchronous manner, one after the other. I'll click OK to begin batch processing. On the left, the batch panel will appear momentarily until all the files are processed, at which point it will disappear. If I now go out to my file explorer and look in the wildlife exported folder, I can see the converted JPEG files all 4,000 pixels in width at reasonable file sizes for sharing. Let's move back to Affinity Photo and look at another example. This time, we'll also add a macro into the mix. I'll add some files from my Panoramas folder. Again, these are documents that I've edited and wish to export. I'll save them into a new folder called Panoramas Exported. 
and I'll choose to save them as TIFFs this time. Panoramas can get quite large, so I may wish to constrain the overall resolution. I'll resample to a maximum width of 6000 pixels wide. On the TIFF export options, I'm actually going to disable compression entirely. This compression is particularly effective, but takes longer to encode, especially with larger resolution images. But for this workflow, I don't mind having larger file sizes as a result of no compression. I'll also explicitly convert the document color spaces to sRGB, as some of these panoramas are in a wider space, such as Adobe RGB. Now I'm also going to apply a macro. This is where batch processing can become very flexible. You can record your own macros and then batch apply them to images quickly. The default category has a black and white macro that I could use, for example. I can simply select it here, then click apply to add it to the applied macros list. I can then remove a macro from the active list by selecting it and clicking remove. I have a macro I've created called Enhanced Depth and Contrast, which I have added to the default category. So I'll select this and add it to the active list. If you have other macro categories installed, you can switch between them using the drop down here. I also have another macro called Channel Mixer Grayscale, which produces a different black and white rendering to the default black and white macro. So I'll also add this to the applied macros list. Then I'll click OK to begin the batch processing. Once it has finished, I can find my converted TIFF files in the export folder I created. We can see that the black and white rendering has been applied, as well as the contrast enhancement. Finally, I'll show you another use for the batch processing functionality, which is to convert legacy formats with non-destructive layer stacks to Affinity Photo's native document format. I'll click Add, then this time, I will add a mixture of PSD and PSB documents from this folder. I'll save into a new folder and call this Converted Legacy Documents. I don't need to do anything else here, as by default I'll already be converting to the AF Photo format. So I'll click OK to begin processing. Once the files have been saved out, I can find them in the Converted Legacy Documents folder. I can click drag one of the files into Affinity Photo to open it. The layer structure from the original PSD file has been retained, so the adjustment layers can be hidden and shown again. I'll open this Camaro file, which was originally a PSB document. Affinity Photo has retained the 32-bit per channel unbounded pixel format this PSB was designed in, and so has high dynamic range pixel values that cannot be mapped to ordinary displays. I could go to Window, 32-bit Preview, to show the 32-bit preview panel down here. Then move the preview exposure slider left to see these values. Affinity Photo can tone map to standard dynamic range using both destructive and non-destructive methods. For a non-destructive approach, I could, for example, add a levels adjustment and bring the output white level slider down. Then I could add a brightness contrast adjustment and bring both brightness and contrast up. Anyway, that was a look at several different uses for batch processing in Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.